U.S. Embassy in Moscow warned Americans late Sunday of potential attacks in public places in Russia, including along the border with Ukraine, where the Kremlin has built up troops in advance of a feared invasion. The embassy said in a statement that, quote, there have been threats of attacks against shopping centers, railway and metro stations, and other public gathering places in major urban areas, end quote, according to media sources. The mission did not point to specific reports. Western countries have been warning for weeks that Moscow could plan an attack on its ex-Soviet neighbor, accusing Russia of building up a force of tens of thousands of troops. The embassy told Americans in Russia, quote, to avoid crowds and, quote, have evacuation plans that do not rely on U.S. government assistance, end quote. The Myanmar junta rejected a regional special envoy's request Sunday to meet with a group of ousted lawmakers, which it had branded a terrorist group, amid attempts to break a year-long political stalemate since the coup. Myanmar's foreign ministry issued a statement late Sunday saying it could not agree to the new Association of Southeast Asian Nations special envoy to Myanmar, engaging with, quote, unlawful associations and terrorist groups, end quote because they were, quote, perpetrating violence and pursuing total destructive path, end quote. This after he told a meeting Thursday he planned a visit with top junta officials in March. Myanmar has been in chaos, its economy paralyzed, and more than 1,500 civilians have been killed in a military crackdown since the attempted coup in February 2021, according to a local monitoring group. The last of the Afghan refugees left a New Jersey military base Saturday for the next phase of their new lives in America. AP correspondent Julie Walker has more. Most settled in established Afghan communities in northern Virginia and the surrounding D.C. area, as well as northern California and Texas. It started in August as Afghanistan fell to the Taliban. The U.S. took in 76,000 fleeing the country with help from organizations like Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service headed by Chris O'Mara of Ignoraja. This mission isn't over. A successful resettlement and integration, it doesn't happen in a matter of days or weeks. She says they'll need help with jobs, permanent housing, and asylum. The last thing we want to see is a wave of deportations of our Afghan allies. And the U.S. still plans to admit thousands of Afghan refugees over the next year. I'm Julie Walker. The last big rigs were towed Sunday out of Canada's capital, where the streets were quiet for the first time in almost a month after a massive police operation ended a drawn-out siege by protesters opposing COVID health rules. A major cleanup was underway in Ottawa's snowy downtown, where police in riot gear had faced off with trucker-led demonstrators for two full days, finally driving them out of their protest hub outside Parliament. A few protesters stayed late Saturday night, but the last gasp protesters turned street party fizzled as a deep freeze gripped the city. Buckingham Palace announced Sunday Queen Elizabeth II has tested positive for COVID-19. AP correspondent Karen Chamas reports. The palace said the 95-year-old monarch is experiencing mild cold-like symptoms and will continue with night duties at Windsor Castle over the coming week. In a statement, the palace also said the Queen will also follow guidelines and receive medical attention. She has had three doses of the coronavirus vaccine. At present in England, people who test positive for COVID-19 have to self-isolate for at least five days. However, the British government says it plans to lift that requirement for England in the coming week. Karen Chamas, London. The Olympic flame was extinguished in Beijing Sunday, marking the end of the most lockdown games in history. It was the second pandemic Olympics in the more than two years since the coronavirus first emerged in China. The movements of athletes, media and workers were heavily restricted and everyone wore masks and took daily COVID tests. There were 463 positive COVID tests reported among thousands of people who came to Beijing for the games. Internationally, many denounced the IOC for holding the Olympics in concert with the Chinese government accused of human rights violations.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.